Welcome to our first Deeper Look video out of a handful this semester. Now, one thing that's going to be kind of different about these videos compared to the, the lecture videos is that for the lecture videos, I provide you the slides ahead of time. You can always refer back to them. Um, what we're going to be doing in these videos is drawing something out um, on the board in front of us, the glass that I have here. And what I want you to think about is um, it is probably going to be most beneficial for you to draw out what I am drawing out as I draw it. And you can pause at any time if you want to go back and make sure you understood what I described we were doing or why we were drawing it. Uh, because we're often going to be making uh, diagrams uh, that end up being quite complex. Or we're going to be organizing a lot of different ideas into um, some kind of chart. And so I encourage you to make sure that you feel confident putting into your notes the work that we're going to do here, because this is going to be the way that it's displayed uh, for us after the fact, is you can always check the very end of the video to make sure that you've got everything on your page. Um, but I encourage you to make it as we go. So this first video is going to be introducing um, something we've already seen in class uh, in the lecture videos but kind of introducing in this format the celestial sphere model. And this model is really important to us because we introduce it here in module one and we continue to use it in different parts of the course uh, as we go. Because the idea is this is a way for us to think about our perspective of the sky. We are stuck here on the ground on earth and even though the earth itself rotates on its axis every single day, we learned that that was part of how we're building calendars uh, over the course of human history. When we actually think about what we uh, perceive from our perspective, the sun rises and sets and all of these stars move through the sky and some are visible uh, throughout the night. Some of them are only visible for some uh, hours and not very often. And so we want to recognize how we can approach that larger model of all of the stars and all the different directions uh, with a model that we can actually then uh, engage with based on our being stuck here on the ground. So something I want you to recognize uh, early on in all of this is that um, we live on the Earth and it rotates and we can model that by simply standing in the room that we're in, uh, and you can pause the video after I do this to try it yourself, uh, and spinning around. Okay, so I'll spin around for us. And the thing I want you to understand, I'm gonna spin two more times, is that every time something comes into my view, it is coming into view on the same side of my vision. And every, anytime something leaves my view, it is leaving on the same side of my vision. So all the stuff that is rising is coming into view on one side of my perspective, and everything that leaves my view or sets is leaving uh, on the other side of my vision. Because of the way the Earth rotates, anything that comes into view is going to come into view on the eastern side of our, um, of our perspective. All the different horizon directions that we could see, stuff will come into view in the general east direction. And if we think about the side of our face, it could be um, coming into view very high up um, in the room or very low down to the ground, but it's still this side of my um, peripheral vision. So things rise in the east, and they set in the west. But an important thing for us to, um, to understand is, I'm going to spin one more time, it is possible for stuff to uh, never leave our view. So if we glance up a little bit, um, the whole time that I'm rotating, I can see the ceiling tiles that are right above um, my head. And so there are some things that stay in one fixed spot. And the visible fixed spot that's kind of where everything seems to rotate around, so everything seems to rotate around. And we learned these terms in the lecture video, so I'm going to use the um, the acronym, the North Celestial Pole and the South Celestial Pole. 
So if we imagine that I was an actual globe, um, then that bit of metal sticking out of my head, that would be the north pole of the Earth, and it points up at the north celestial pole. And uh, straight through my feet, um, that would be the south pole of the Earth, and it points straight down at the south celestial pole. So those facts, which are going to be in our slides um, in section 1.4 coming up, those facts really help us to think about all of the different movement that we might see in the celestial sphere. But I want us to actually come back to our um, terms that we first learned in the celestial sphere uh, slides in section 1.3. And so we want to talk about these different, these different terms that we were introduced to. So we have the observer-centered terms, so the observer focus. And so this is not thinking about me as the globe anymore. This is just me, a human being, standing on the ground, looking around at the sky around me. And we learned about um, zenith, which is the point directly overhead. And I'm going to encourage you, as you watch this video, to just point straight up and look at it briefly. That's where your zenith is. And you're in a completely different room watching this video at a later point in physical time. And what you're pointing at right now is different than what I'm pointing at. But we're both pointing at our zenith. That's what we mean by observer focus. That uh, you have to know where you are physically observing from for anything to be, um, anything to be kind of known at what's at that zenith point astronomy-wise. There's also the nadir, um, which points straight down, and I'm not going to list it here because it's not that relevant to astronomy, uh, but there is that term that refers to what's directly beneath our feet, uh, and the whole Earth is directly beneath our feet. There's nothing exciting to see there astronomy-wise. And horizon is the other important one for us. So that's where the uh, sky meets the ground, and it's this kind of flat circle all around. So we can think of this as a um, flat circle, whereas this is one point. Okay. And then we talked about the um, fixed points in space. So fixed points. All right, and so those fixed points, one of the most important ones is the North Celestial Pole, and that is also where the North Star um, is found. So that's going to be quite important to us, this idea that the North Star, Polaris, is at this special point in space is really, really essential to us. Uh, so we'll be coming back to that one. We also have the South Celestial Pole, um, so I'll list it here. They don't have a South Star, which is quite a bummer for them. Um, and they have a set of four stars called the Southern Cross that points towards uh, the point in space uh, where everything seems to rotate around, uh, but they don't have a South Star. We also have the Celestial Equator. And that celestial equator is important to us because it goes from perfectly east, so we call that due east, through the southern sky down to perfectly due west. Uh, and that's going to really help us uh, think about the star motions throughout a night uh, and the sun's possible locations throughout the year. And then we have the ecliptic. which is the plane of the solar system. So the Earth itself is on a tilt, a 23 and a half degree tilt. And so as it goes around the sun in its yearly orbit, its revolution, uh, it is going through this flat plane throughout the solar system. And that plane is uh, the ecliptic on our sky. What that also means is the ecliptic is where all of the um, planets and the moon and the sun can all be found throughout the course of any given day or month or year. We're going to have a separate video um, for the ecliptic because there is a lot more to talk about um, beyond this kind of initial celestial sphere understanding. So we have uh, different drawings in our slides that I want us to be able to refer back to. Um, and so I'm not going to try to redraw all of them in this case, and I don't want us to try to redraw all of them in our notebook either. But what I do want us to be thinking about is um, this idea of these observer-centered terms and how they can interact with these fixed points.
So we're going to draw a view. Um, I'm going to draw it down here. A view of us facing north. So this is as if we are um, setting up a camera in our backyard that faces north and we're not worried about any trees or buildings or anything in our way. We've got this flat sky, or not flat sky, we've got this clear sky um, and a relatively flat ground. So here's the ground. This line that I've drawn here would be the horizon. It's where the sky meets the ground. And us living here in Michigan, the North Star is about halfway up in the sky. We'll um, see in our notes and in our lecture that the height of the North Star above the um, horizon is based on our latitude. But for now, we're going to recognize that the North Celestial Pole is about halfway up in the sky. Now here's the important thing, and this is really what I want us to be drawing in our notes. If we haven't been um, listing this because we feel we've already kind of captured it in our notes, that's okay. But I want us to be drawing this view here because our goal is to think about how stars move through the sky. So if we are facing north and we swing a little bit to our right, uh, we're going to be facing east. Uh, and if we were facing north and we swing a little bit to our left, we're going to be facing west. And we already have these facts that we've talked about uh, at the beginning of this video. And so stuff rises in the east and it sets in the west. So convenient for my uh, horizon arrow, it works out for us. But what I want us to recognize is everything seems to rotate around the North Celestial Pole. So if things are rising in the east and they're setting in the west, we kind of have this direction already built in for us that we're going to have to have circles that go around like this to be consistent with going upwards on the eastern part of the sky and downwards on the western part of the sky. So we have this kind of interesting uh, counterclockwise motion in the sky and I do not want us to memorize the word counterclockwise. That's not that helpful to us. It is these three facts that really build our understanding of where stars seem to go throughout um, multiple hours of a night. So the North Star is the point also labeled the North Celestial Pole and other stars are going to be going um, kind of sideways if they're near the ground at due north. They're going to be going up and around on the northeast part of the sky and they're going to be coming down uh, and around if they're in the northwest part of the sky. So that's our general understanding of facing north and we do want to make sure we feel comfortable with that. Recognizing that um, zenith would be up here Zenith would be pointed directly straight up and the horizon is already the line that I drew as I mentioned before. So by viewing north, we were able to see the North Celestial Pole, but these two um, other fixed points weren't really in our view very easily. So let's try south instead. So we're going to be facing south. We've got the ground again, I'm going to write ground. I'm not going to write out the word uh, horizon again, but it is this line that I've drawn and straight up would be towards zenith also. And if we're facing south and we swing a little bit to our left, uh, we are facing east. And if we're facing south and we swing a little bit to our right, we are facing west. So now we want to think about the fact that the North Celestial Pole is not here anymore. And really important for us, the South Celestial Pole is not visible from Michigan. And indeed, it's not visible from anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so not visible from Michigan. It will not be in this view either. But what will be in the celestial, uh, what will be in the sky is the celestial equator. So I'm going to draw it as a dashed line. It's going to go about halfway up in the sky also. We'll be um, exploring exactly how high up in the sky, um, possibly in an in a, uh, activity that we do uh, outside of these videos. But this is the celestial equator. So I'm going to write CE for celestial equator. CE. And what I want us to remember is that we already have the keys that we need. 
Um, everything seems to rotate, rotate around the North Celestial Pole and South Celestial Pole. We don't have one of those in our picture, so we're not going to be seeing full circles. But we do know that things rise in the east, and they set in the west, which means that as we go perfectly south, stuff has made it to its highest point so that it can go up on its way to directly south and down on its way away from directly south. And there's something really important that we have not included in these drawings yet um, that I will um, indicate and you can decide if you want to put it in a separate diagram or, um, or add it here. But what we have not indicated or drawn is the, um, the meridian. So if we have, I'm going to draw a new smaller um, north. So here's our ground, here's the North Celestial Pole. And I'm going to draw the south as well. Here's our ground. Here's our dashed line celestial equator. What we have not yet talked about is the meridian. So the meridian, this vertical line, it goes from the north through our zenith, and then it comes back down in the south, due south. So this is also still the meridian. And again, you can decide if you want to add it to these pictures. They're just already quite complicated. But the thing is, any star's highest point is happening along the meridian. Even for these circles here, um, this won't be the highest point, even though it is along the meridian. But for a star that manages to go its full circle all the way around, its highest point will be along that meridian point. So what I want us to be able to do, and I know that there's a lot here and that we've talked a lot and it's um, kind of getting to be a, a lengthy video at this point, is to be able to think about stars' motions throughout the sky um, over the course of a night based on these facts. Because again, it is the Earth itself that is rotating and bringing stuff into and out of our view. So um, I'm gonna leave this all up here Thank you for watching our first of several uh, Deeper Look videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.